What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to properly use personal access tokens when authenticating to github so let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to learn how to properly use personal access tokens on GitHub for authentication. And to see why that's necessary, we're going to go into the secret private repo that I just created. And we're going to try to clone it in the command line, which of course, will need authentication, because this is a private repository. So if I open up the terminal, and I navigate to desktop and say git clone, and the URL, you can see it asks me for the username. And it asks me for the password. Now I'm providing the correct password. And once this is done, you can see I get the message remote support for password authentication was removed on August 13, 2021. This is no longer possible, you can no longer authenticate yourself by just providing username and password. And then you get a link here to the documentation which explains what to do instead. Now, what we're going to do in this video here is we're going to learn how to use access tokens instead. So how can we generate access tokens? And how can we then use them to actually do things like cloning and pushing to the repository? And this is something that a lot of beginners don't know how to do. They know they have to use access tokens, but they don't know how to do it. So this is what we're going to cover here. The first thing you want to do is you want to click on your profile picture and you want to go down to settings. And then on the left side, you want to scroll down to developer settings. And here now you can click on personal access tokens and you can choose between tokens classic and fine grained tokens, which have specific uh, privileges. So we're going to go to fine grain tokens, you can see I have a bunch of them already, you can delete tokens that you create, but you cannot copy them. So when you generate a, to a token, you need to keep it somewhere because you're not going to be able to just click on the token and see what the token is, you basically have to regenerate it or you have to uh, yeah, generate a new, to uh, a new token altogether. So what you want to do is you want to click on generate new token and you want to give the token a name. So in my case, I'm going to call it now tutorial token. And you can set it to expire after a certain number of days. So let's go 30 here, you can give it a description if you want to. And then you can decide what you want to do with this token. This token can have access to public repositories to all repositories or to only a specific selection of repositories. And what I can do now here is I can give it access to the secret private repo. So this token here only has access to this one repo, whatever permissions I grant, it's going to be limited to this specific repository. Um, and the permissions I grant are here in repository permissions. Now I don't want to go into all these settings here. Um, basically, you can read through them and decide what you want to be able to do. You can basically decide what you want to do. So you can just set all of this to read and write. And then you're going to have maximum privileges on this repository. Now, of course, I'm going to do it here for the tutorial while I'm talking. But of course, what you want to do actually is you want to only grant the rights that you actually want or that you actually need, you don't want to give more rights to a token or more access to a token than you need. However, what probably beginners like to do is they like to just as I'm doing here right now, they like to just turn on everything so they don't miss anything. Because otherwise, of course, they can run into the issue that they don't have access and they don't know why. So if you give maximum permission like this, uh, you're not really on the safe side, but you are on the maximum capability side. So in this case, now I have all the rights that I can have here for the token, then I can also give it permissions about the account, I don't want to do that now. And once you have set up everything the way you want, you can just click on generate token. And what this will do is it will generate this token here. So you can just copy it by clicking on this button. And then you have uh, the token. Now this token, as it says here, you will not be able to see this again. So save it into a file, store it somewhere, you're not going to be able to just click on the token and see the token again, you have to put it somewhere, otherwise you have to regenerate it. So yeah, that's that's the important part. Um, now, what do we do with this token? This is just a token. So where do we put it? How do we actually clone the repository now with this token? Um, the way to do this is to add the token to the URL. So to the remote URL. Um, you basically go into a terminal, you go to a desktop. And what you do is you say git clone. And then you do the same thing that we did before. Now, first of all, let me just put my token somewhere. Let's just open up a file token txt, I'm going to just put it here. Um, so I can copy it here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get this link again, I want to copy to clipboard. And then I want to say git clone. 
this URL here. But now instead of just doing it like that, and also instead of just doing uh, neural nine at which is, you know, how you would authenticate yourself neural nine at github.com. Uh, we're going to do that. But we're going to also provide here colon and the token and a token. Now I need to copy it. So cat token txt. This is the token copy. And then before the at, I'm going to add this token here. And when I run this now, you can see I cloned the repository. So I can go into secret private repo, I have the readme here and I can do some stuff like for example, I can uh, create a new file.txt. I can go into that file, I can say hello world, I can save it. I can say git add new file, I can say git commit dash m my new file, and then I can just say git push and I don't need to really do anything. Uh, I can just say git push and it's automatically going to push it with the token because I already used the token when I um, when I cloned the repository. Now in case you want to set this URL manually so that the repository knows that the token is part of the URL, you can do the following command git remote set dash URL origin, and then basically the repository uh, URL here. So this with the token. So again, neural nine, colon, and then uh, I need to copy the token again. Like this paste and then at github.com. And this will then automatically be used when you push when you pull when you do anything, this token is part of the uh, URL that you set for the remote. So you have the permissions because the token is part of the whole uh, URL that you're using. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.